be very, very quiet. I'm hunting wabbits. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Dennis Gebhardt here with Guru Nation, and welcome you to this episode of Rabbit Trails, along with my partner in crime, Max Marciano. Max, how you doing, brother? Hi, I'm great, Dennis. How are you doing? Well, I'm good now that we got past the opening. Holy mackerel. I mean, second my... time's the charm. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Well, first of all, happy Thanksgiving, my friend. We're making this recording um, on uh, Sunday of Thanksgiving weekend. How was your Thanksgiving? It was great. Very relaxing, full of good food, good okay. cocktails, and lots of movies. How about yours? Uh, well, it was just the same. We had some turkey, dressing, had a wonderful, wonderful dinner, got to see a couple of movies. I, I really thought I had... Have you ever... Thought you saw a movie in the past, and then when you watch it, you go, no, I never saw this movie. I don't know why I thought I saw it. <laughs> I guess they advertised it so much, I guess that I thought I had seen it. So right. we watched a couple of movies, one with uh, Wesley Snipes, which he was always a really, you know, he's one of my favorite actors, especially when it came to martial arts. And then uh, one with Denzel Washington. And... Um, it was just a really, really great day. We just took it easy, and uh, it was nice. And uh, this morning, my wife made for me uh, mm -hmm. turkey dressing waffles for breakfast. Come on. <laughs> I know people like a what? And so what she does, she had this brainstorm last year. You know, she takes the tur turkey stuffing she, that, that we had on Thanksgiving, and she like add an egg to it and make it into a dough, and then she put it in the waffle iron. And then she makes her chutney from scratch. So it's like fresh cranberries and oranges, just really delicious. And we put that over the top of it, had a couple eggs on the side. And I had bird with bird. It was a double that bird sounds, breakfast. <laughs> that sounds so good. Yeah, sounds good to you and me. Some people are probably going, yeah, <laughs> I could need eggs and turkey dressing, but that's okay. If you don't want it, that's cool. But it worked yeah. for me. So... Anyway, here we are, <coughs> episode number 30. It's so hard to believe that we are working into the third generation of uh, rabbit trails. My God. And it, it doesn't even seem like we started this all that long ago. I know. I know. I'm just shocked. It's uh, kind of crazy. But uh, look, it sure has given us an opportunity. You know, one of the things that uh, I want to kind of ask you what, what you think about is it have you I, I was using this analogy today and I was thinking about <clears throat> people who go in and clear out the forest the people who work in mm -hmm. forestry and so they go in and they clear out the forest they clean up all the pathways and all the roads and it's very clean and very safe but if they don't get back come back around then what happens is all that foliage and all that underbrush and all that grows back and now they got to clean it all out again sure and i think in hair color sometimes that is more the reality than it is fiction uh it Absolutely. is because uh, you know how it is we we watch social media and we think we've got it pretty well cleared out people are pretty clear on information and then it just stuff just rears its ugly head you know, it's, it really is true. You know, I was talking to uh, my partner, Kellen, about this. And I'm like, you know, it seems like every time we do a live or we we do one of these rabbit trails, you know, inevitably we end up talking about a lot of the same stuff over and over again. Right. right. And, you know, I think that is just part of the process of kind of, you know, landscaping our yes. forest, you yes. know. Yeah. And and that's just part of the that's that's part of getting the message out to you know each individual learner. Right. You know, it's like right. when you're when you're ready to receive that information, you receive it. And that's right. You know, some people receive it sooner than others. And there's right. always sort of these generations of learners that are sort of passing through our purview that that get it. So, you know, right. I've kind of, I, I've just sort of uh, come to the realization that, you know, these things that we see, it, it's going to be like this till, till the end of our yeah. careers. And we're just going to be 
spreading the message right until well, then. I, I totally agree with you and and for those that are watching this episode um, you're probably going to hear some things in here that you've heard before and that's cool but mm -hmm. <clears throat> I also find that when I go back sometimes and watch some of the episodes that we've done um, the, there's always a, a nugget or two that is new to every episode and so that little nugget is maybe that piece that we have forgot to include the last time that we okay. did the show so hopefully that's what you'll feel like today so um, we are starting a series today called lost in translation and i was inspired to uh share that with max this morning because as you know max my book is finally complete captain color versus the pigment pirates and uh so it, is, it is uh off to the publisher here in the next day or two and hopefully it will be available sometime in january i'm hoping it's available before hair color school is finished but if not, it may be, a, a, may be the end of January, who knows. But um, there's a segment in there called Lost in Translation, but it has to do with the consultation. So translation's important, I think, in our business. I, I remember one time people asked me, what do, you, what do you consider yourself? What do you think your skills are? And I said, well, past hair color, I think one, when I work with clients, I'm a translator because I have to translate what they want into something that I can see so we both are on the same same page I'm also a um, visionary to help create a picture for them so that they can see what I'm talking about and so those two skills are not only what happens in the salon <coughs> but they're what happens in education in our business so as a, as a trainer, you know, my job is to, number one, um, use analogies um, to help people understand the concepts of how hair color works. And I have to be visionary enough to choose the proper analogies and metaphors so that they get the message clear. So that's sure. what we call teaching for transfer so that that message transfers and they really understand it. And um, surprisingly enough, I, I, like many people, make assumptions. You know, my assumption is that you kind of understand basic color theory. And I'm wrong a lot of times. And we have seen that raise its ugly head in the last few weeks on social media. Absolutely. In several, place, in several places. So uh, today we're going to try and cover some, we actually made a list for everyone watching. <laughs> and the reason we did is because we got together here <clears throat> and we just said, well, we got to talk about this. We got to talk about that. We got to talk about this. We got to talk about that. We went, whoa, you know, this is only supposed to be a 35 minute to 45 minute show. So uh, we're going to cover the most important things and then we're going to pick it up so you'll notice that uh, periodically during rabbit trail shows, we may say this is like today is Lost in Translation chapter one. So this is the first part of what we're going to be talking about. And we may do a couple of rabbit trails where we don't talk about Lost in Translation. And then we may come back and do Lost in Translation chapter two. So keep your eyes out because I think that it's gonna play a role in a lot of things that we do this 10, 10 episode season uh, and to help clarify some of those things. So Max, the first thing I think is important to talk about, and, and you and I've talked about this, is, is uh, the wrong theory. Absolutely, or what we like to say, <laughs> the theory of the wrong theory. Yes. <laughs> and and I think a lot of this, it starts at the very beginning, right? You know, we as trainers, you know, have to, to turn around and teach color theory, right? And, you know, who, who doesn't love hearing about primary colors, secondary colors, tertiary colors, complementary colors, harmonic colors, the law of color, the law of neutralization, the law of naturalization, et cetera, right? 
However, I think one of the, the big things that kind of gets missed when this information is delivered to our students is these are concepts that are taken typically from other areas like art and mixing paint. And it's applied to something we're doing with chemical onto a chemical structure. Right. So it's not so, and I hate to use the term black or white, yeah. but you know, it's an idea or a concept that we're right. applying to this other field. So a lot of times, I mean, I don't know about you, Dennis, but when you first started doing hair color, mm. you know, what, what happened when you applied that, that level six red to the green hair? Yeah, it was not brown. Exactly. You know, so we've all been in situations where, you know, we've been taught this idea, you know, based around the color wheel, color theory, or the law of color, applied it, and it didn't work. And you go, but, you know, the hair was yellow, and I put violet on it. Or I've heard yeah. someone say, I put purple on it, which is right. like a whole nother episode. We'll whole get nother there. episode, yeah. So, you know, I think that's the first sort of breakdown. And we're not saying that 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 theory is wrong, but the wrong theory is just to make it this all-encompassing sort of absolute theory, as opposed to saying, now we're going to teach you this concept, which is taken from art. Now you have to, you know, know that we are working with chemicals. We're not working right. with paint. We're not painting a wall. Right. You know, the hair is also a chemical structure that's composed of many different, you know, complex, you know, organizations. Right. But here, here's how we marry it. Right. No, you're absolutely right. And I, and I think that what you said there was very, very key. It's, we're not saying it's the wrong theory. We're saying it's the wrong theory for what is actually happening if you state it as a matter of fact. And we all did that. If you remember when we learned in school, some of the things we learned in school, we ran with that. And then when we got exposed to the reality, we went, whoa, why didn't they teach me that? Well, because there's, a, there's several reasons. I can't tell you why they didn't teach you that. I mean, we could always say, well, they didn't know. Or we could say they were focused on teaching you to pass the test, not to be an expert, Chris. You know, I mean, there's a multitude of reasons. And you say, well, where'd they get that theory anyway? Well, most of them got the theory from manufacturers who take the theory and they manipulate it <laughs> so that it supports and validates what they're saying. And so, <clears throat> so just the simple things like, you know, we learned that blue, red, and yellow in order of their dominance, blue is the strongest, red is the second strongest, yellow is the weakest of the three primary colors. That's true. When you talk about light absorption, okay, blue is the strongest. All right, and that's why blue, because it has so much strength, it requires more red and more yellow in order for you to balance the shade. Because equal parts of blue, red, and yellow, if those are all the three colors that make up all the colors we see, I think that's what they taught you in color mm -hmm. class, that's what they taught me. Law of physics says when you combine all three, all of the colors, and they're all absorbed, you see a color that we call black. Not brown, but black. So that is confusing to many, many people because we say strong, and that's fine to say that, but then the visuals that we use, that's what makes it a real issue. Sure. You know, like we use all kinds of things. Most people use paint, acrylic paint. Some people use pieces of fabric. Um, but you have to remember that the reason that
that hair lightens has to do with the way it breaks down when you when you put a decomposing product on it, which that's what all hair color is. Part of it decomposes mm -hmm. the hair to make space. And then the dye intermediates are carried into the hair. They bond together and they create a color molecule. So I think this is what led to the blue molecule, the red molecule, and the yellow molecule size. And I'm sure. telling you, it just kills me when I hear people talk like that. Because I'm sure originally, you know, people said, well, why does the color go dark, right? Why does the color go dark when I put it on the hair? And the reason it goes dark or deeper than expected is because of the uptake of the background in the hair color. But that's not what they teach. They say, well, it's because the blue molecule got stuck in the hair. Right. And so you lost your warmth. That's the terminology. You lost it. Now, me, I was a real smart ass, right? In beauty school. I said, well, well where did it go? <laughs> they right. said, well, you lost it. I go, well, did it become a gas? Did it fall on the floor? What happened to it? Nothing happened to it. It just that the hair, the uptake was stronger. It, it, it absorbed the most dominant part of a color which is called background. It's not called blue. Right. It's called background. It absorbed the most dominant part of it so you couldn't see the tone that was in the hair. And so that's not the way they taught it. And so now we have people saying, you know, that <clears throat> the blue molecule is a certain size, the red molecule is a certain size, and the yellow molecule is another size. And it varies based upon who tells that story. Oh, yeah, some, completely. Some people say the blue molecule is bigger. Some say the blue molecule is smaller. So here's something that people might want to know. There is no metric, no way of measuring the size of a blue molecule, red molecule, or yellow molecule in hair color because it's not based upon molecular size on the results that we see, it's based upon the law of physics, which is based upon light and vision. Boom. <sighs> Boom. Boom. You know, Mic drop. <laughs> you know, Dennis, too, I think another thing that, that kind of gets missed a lot is that these things are talked about like they're they're independent from like the, the structure of the hair. So even the the, the natural melanin in the hair, right? Which are, right. which typically we refer to as eumelanin, theomelanin, right? Right, right. You know, when we lighten the hair, we're not just going after the melanin. The entire, when you put either color or mm -hmm. lightener on the hair, the entire structure of the hair is being broken down, right? Yes. You know, it's like not like I've even heard people use the analogy. Oh, it's like Pac-Man. You know, Pac-Man goes in and you know seeks out those melanins and eats those up. You know, to make room for artificial dye molecules to come into the hair. And it's like, okay, I can see where that is a good analogy. But the reality is, is like this whole process is happening all at the same time. There yeah. is no, there is no. You know, first it's doing this, then it's doing that. Then, you know, the list is happening in the first 15 minutes and the deposit's happening here. And, you know, at this time, the molecules go out and make lunch and then they come back. And, you know, <laughs> it, it's sort of like, you know, when, when the, like with permanent hair color, for instance, when you mix the color and the, the developer together, apply it to the hair, at the end of the process, you know, yes, you have a whole new piece of fabric, basically. Like right. that, that hair is permanently altered. Yeah. Those mo color molecules or dye molecules are now part of the hair. Yes. Yes, that's so why it's called permanent hair color. The hair is permanently <laughs> altered. So then to, to kind of circle back to where, you know, 
you know, with like when when color is applied to porous hair, <clears throat> you know, th there's this this uh, I always say it's a matter of real estate, right? You got to know, you know, what you're working with, and if, right. if you have hair that structurally like has a few, you know, like you go into a house with a sledgehammer, knock out a few walls here and there, right? Right. And then you go in and you try to wallpaper where those walls have been knocked down. What are you going to have? You're going to have kind of wallpaper sticking, you know, onto over holes, but it's right. not going to look as nice as right. if you structurally repair the wall. Exactly. And you guys, I know that's a crude analogy, but it's the best one that I can tell you. Because when we damage hair, whether it's from lighteners, color, heat tools, flat irons, whatever, you know, we are kind of poking holes into the structure. We and, are. you know, it is a matter of putting that proper support back into the hair so that when those color molecules go in and become part of the structure, they're all still there. They didn't fall out. Right. You know, I mean, I've done it where, you know, I've created a, a funky end color result because I misjudged my canvas. So then, right. I've gone in and added more color to provide that necessary support. So I right. essentially, I, I, I colored then filled. Yes. You know, and sometimes you can, you, you add a little extra warmth into your formula to also make up for that lack of structure right. in the hair, you know, there's, and that's, and that's the beauty of what we do. There's so many different ways you can approach it. But when you really know what you're dealing with and how these products work and how the hair responds and what the hair is made of, it is so empowering because when you have a, a, a head of hair that's, let's say, moderately damaged, right, but you're still going to color it, you go, okay, so here's my choices. I can pre-treat it. I can go in and just roll the dice and apply my target shade. And if, if I get a funky end result, I could, you know, apply something right over top of it to, right. to alter the formula. Or I can manipulate my formula by adding something to it to make up for what I think is, you know, going to happen. Because as you've taught me, as was taught to you by your mentor, the science of hair color is the science of precise estimation. Exactly. There is no black or white. There is no absolute. We are trying to predict how the hair is going to respond when we put that hair coloring product on it. Exactly. So it, it, and, it isn't just always like, I see yellow, I got to grab violet. There's so many more moving parts and pieces. Right. Right. You know, and, and, uh, and, and really, a color molecule is really not a molecule. I know that sounds contradictory, but it is, that's what it is. It is a combination of dye intermediates, that's what they're called, because they're colorless, and they are carried in, delivered to the cortex of the hair where they bind with the structure of the hair and with each other, so they connect. Mm -hmm. So it's actually a linking of dye intermediates, precursors, couplers and modifiers. So what's in that hair, yes, we call it a color molecule, but it's really a lot of components that are connected together by couplers. So the next, and so you have to imagine it's a, like maybe it connected like this. Right. So the first time after a color service, we shampoo the hair. Well, water's gonna swell the hair and we use a surfactant-based shampoo on it that may disturb the hair a little bit. And what mm -hmm. happens is it loosens the color molecule. What's loosening are the couplers that are holding the whole thing together because without that being coupled together, you wouldn't even see the color. Right. So the more the hair is swollen, and, sh and, and the more it is, is shrinked, the more it is swollen and the more it is constricted, every time it's working that color molecule until eventually sometimes those couplers will 
they'll cleave. They'll be, they'll disconnect. And the moment that happens, you see a different color. That is what we call fading. That is hair color fading. That's not marbles washing out of the hair. Right. It's called fading because the couplers have become disengaged and light now when it strikes it based upon its shape, its chemical structure and its size will give you a different impression of what you're looking at. It's not about blue leaving first, <laughs> red leaving second, and yellow leaving last. And actually, if you talk about sequence, there is no sequence. I always consider a color process like releasing a miniature whirlwind on the hair. And at the end of the chaos, I'm going to have some sort of a visual result <laughs> called yeah. color. Exactly. That's really what that's really what's happening. And so, uh, I just want to take uh, your little fading scenario one step further, because I know a few of you are out there going, well, I have, you know, dyed red hair. And when I do that first shampoo, I see you know, color in the bottom of my shower. Mm -hmm. I know, I know. However, another thing that we are not always taught is that color molecules not only develop on the inside of the hair, but they can develop on the outside. Some of them don't, some, some of the men are left behind and women, uh, you know, on the outside of the hair and that cuticle has those. And that, especially if you're using a product that also has uh, com what we call combination dyes, right? You right. Know, they have right. oxidative and direct. They give you that really great punch the day of the color service, but that first shampoo, some of them didn't make it. Well, yeah, the because court they're deck. developing in the bowl, right? They're developing in the bowl, so they're getting yeah. bigger. They're, it's true. The story about getting bigger is true. Yeah. It's not really like putting a ship in a bottle. They're getting bigger in the bowl, so some of them will get stuck between the cuticle layers because that's the pathway to the cortex. It's through the CMC, cuticle membrane complex. It's like going down a maze, finding their way to the cortex. Some of them are too fat. They'll never make it into the hair. Yeah. Those, those are the guys you see when you put your hair in the shower and you see color run out of your hair. It's also a sign right. of an improper post-oxidation. So. But boom. There we go. So, most important thing in this chapter one was to talk about the wrong theory. Max, is there anything that we missed on that? Just keep up your landscaping, guys. <laughs> yeah. Keep up your landscaping. Keep educating yourself. And we will pick this up on chapter two. Because I think we've already been doing this for like 35 minutes, haven't we, Max? It looks like it. Yeah. So close to 40, anyway, I think. Hopefully you picked up a nugget or two. Hopefully you, uh, <clears throat> you may have heard something you've heard before. My mentor always said repetition is the best teacher. So the more you hear it, the more you understand it. If some of you are going, what the heck are you talking about? Chromophores, uh, precursors, couplers, I've never heard that. Come to Hair Color School. Hair yeah. Color School, we teach what actually happens in the hair. Uh, we don't use buckets of paint. We don't use pieces of fabric. We teach you what's actually happening in the hair. Hair color school for the winter session is already sold out. It's beyond sold out. We're very happy for that, very proud. Uh, hair color spring session, the dates have already been selected and it should be up <clears throat> soon. So keep your eye out, go to www.gurunation.net and um, check out our educational catalog. We have a couple of educational events coming up here this month, our last two classes. On December the 6th, we have a deleted program, which is all about working with direct dyes. It's a short bite of education. It's a 90 minute class. Uh, and I think you'll walk away understanding. We actually show you how to cancel or delete uh, direct dyes so that they lighten out of the hair or they lighten more naturally. 
And then on the 19th of December, is it 19th or 16th? For Code 17th. Breaker? Code Breaker. It is probably Monday, right? Yeah. So let me look. I got, I'll pull up my calendar. Let's I think it's the here. 17th. Code Breaker is the 13th. 13th Delete of December. Yes. yes. Code Breaker, the 13th of December. It is a five hour program, it's a full day program. Uh, would be three hours on, um, and then we'll take a short break. We come back and we finish up. And it's all about color correction. And those are the last two classes for 2021. Um, <clears throat> we start off in January with Hair Color School, and then we Dennis, have- We have the, the, oh, the, our holiday. The 20th of December, uh, yes, yes. And then in January, we also have a program, in the middle of January, Max and I are doing um, it's called Symphony, and it's going to be design and color. It's a two-day program, so you'll learn design skills on day one, and you'll learn color skills that relate and marriage the color and design together on day two. And um, so those, those programs are upcoming. Also on December 20th, as always, we are doing our holiday end-of-year wrap-up where we are bringing a lot of the people who are part of our educational team. Each one of them will be doing a short segment. It starts at 10 o'clock in the morning on December the 20th, and it should be going probably for about three hours, about a three hour session, and uh, it's free. All you have to do is send an email to dgebhardt at gurunation.net and tell me you're interested, we will send you out a registration link where you can register for the program. And then shortly after you send in your registration, they will send you a logon link information to log on. We only have spaces for 100 people. So you want to get early. We've already sold out over half of it. So we're very excited about that. And um, hopefully we'll see you on the 20th of December. Uh, we have uh, Callum McKenzie. He's going to come in and talk to you about business. Uh, Yvette Fortune is going to be talking about consultation with the clients. Uh, Sylvia Gubhart is going to be there doing texture services, permanent waving, things you need to know to help you be more successful in there. And Erica Blancet is going to talk about hair painting, uh, balayage, color blending, things of that sort. She has a great, great uh, concept about how she approaches painting there. I think that'll be great. And then Max and I, of course, are going to do a little segment. So we're excited to uh, to celebrate the end of the year and and thank everyone who has supported us throughout 2021. Uh, you know, I was thinking on Thanksgiving Day of all the things that I'm grateful for, and and one thing that we are really grateful for is for you. You are the people who keep us as a company relevant. You are um, the people who, number one, support what we teach. And uh, we have so many people who have had great experiences with us and that validates what we're doing. We are always seeking to make our education better and more fulfilling for you. And uh, we consider you a family member once you've gone through our education. Uh, we believe that we are connected from that point forward. And um, we're just really glad for you. And we thank all of you for everything that you've done for us through 2021. Remember, you can subscribe here on YouTube to our channel. And that way we, are, you know, just click on the little bell and it will give you notification every time that uh, a new uh, video drops. And uh, you can follow us on Instagram. You can find Max at Max M Hair. You can find me at Real Captain Color. And, uh, Send us some notes. Let us know how things are working for you. If you have questions, send us those questions. We'll try to focus on those in each one of our episodes. I know some of you sent a lot of requests for us to focus on certain things. And some of them we haven't gotten to yet this year. But we promise you we will in this next next season of Rabbit Trails. Uh, so also, we may have a new look uh, by the time we get to see you next time. We're working on that. We've got some new video updates to our program. And we're very excited to, to work with those and, and have some fun. So in any case, thank you so much for staying with us today. And oh, oh, well, there it is, Max. There's the chopper. The chopper. On the go. Yeah.
All right. I will see you in the clearing, my friend. Thank you, you everyone, for joining us today. Happy Thanksgiving to you. And we will see you uh, sometime before Christmas. Have a great, great okay. week. Take care. Bye-bye now. Bye, guys.